Well, hello, Open Door Church, Open Door Tribe, and all of you that follow us on our Wednesday evening online services. And I call you blessed and highly favored. It's been incredible, incredible, just the last few weeks of ministry yeah. and just time with the Lord. I had an incredible Easter uh, service encounter. That's right. Wait, are you saying that you had one? Or we had we, one. Oh, yeah, of course we did. Come on, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, drink some more coffee. You Come need on, to wake I'm up, sorry. brother. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what incredible weekend service we had. We had the roar and the concert. I'm telling you what. I've, I've been to what they call the A-team players in worship music. I've seen a lot of uh, uh, concerts that have traveled the country. And I'm telling you what, man, our worship band's kicking it, dude. Thanks, I, 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 I think they're, they're, they're up there with the best of the best, not only in quality of excellence and execution, but actually just how they carry the presence of the Lord is amazing. Thanks, Jerry. Appreciate that, man. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So we had that. Then we had our five Easter services. And uh, then the Easter picnic was like a, that was like a wow. Yeah. That was like, you know, think of your best dessert. And if you don't like cherries, whatever you like, then putting that thing on top, it kind of uh, brought the whole thing. We yeah. saw a lot of salvations. That's right. Uh, Saw a lot of baptisms. It's just a great move of God, man. And every week, it's almost like if we step into it, the Lord always meets us there. And we want that to happen right now as sure. we uh, go into continuing the series, asking for a friend. And it's, it's, bringing up, it's bringing up situations. It's bringing up questions. It's bringing up hot topics. And uh, Pastor Troy's been sharing a lot. Uh, AJ and I have done a couple of them already, and we're going to do, uh, do some tonight. So uh, what, what's... what's What's about the top of thing that we're going to tackle uh, tonight? I mean, we ha we've been asking a lot of people to submit questions, and man, and we have some really good ones. So if you're ready to jump in, Jerry, I'm ready, man. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's bring Holy Spirit on Come this, on. And, then, and then we'll get right in the midst of it. So, Lord, we love you, and we praise you, and we thank you, God, for what you've done and what you are doing in our lives. We thank you for the personal invitation that you have called us out to do life with us. I think about the scripture. It says, if we will draw nigh unto you, you will draw nigh unto us. And it's just your heart and passion to do life with us. So we invite Holy Spirit as we talk about some uh, questions that people from time to time ask. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you give us wisdom and direction. And uh, I pray this actually would be something that really ministers to all those that will watch it, either this week or in following weeks. And we just praise you, God. We love you, and we give you honor and glory. We want to thank you for all the incredible yes, things Lord. that you let us walk in, you let us experience. Thank you that you hear our prayers and you answer and, Lord, I just want to praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Man, before we get started, man, I want to show you how cool my little iPad thing is. Isn't that cool? It looks like a composition book. Like, look at this. I wanted to pull Can a piece of paper out and write on it. Dude, it's, isn't it awesome? It's I'm really impressed. Cool, I'm impressed. So, it has a little room for my little pencil and all that. Oh. <laughs> You're high tech, AJ. I really am, man. I really it. are. All right, Pastor Jerry, here comes the first question, man. Okay. We've asked a ton of people. And this is a really good question. It says, would a loving God send people to hell? Wow. You're going to, you're going to, right off the bat, you're going to go for the juggle. I, I am. These are going to be some really tough questions tonight, man. So let, I want to so, see. So would a loving God, would a loving God send someone to hell? I want to flip that. Okay. Right. I would ask it like this. Has God gone out of his way through personal sacrifice and intervene when all of mankind is on its way to hell? That's right. What do you yeah. think about that? Man, I don't know, Pastor Jerry. You know what? I'm going to, if I can add to that, like Pastor Troy said something this weekend, and he said God is not, and I'm going to phrase it this way, God is not in the hurricane business. God is not in the... You know, like in the killing babies business. The, the storms and the earthquakes yeah. and all that. Yeah. And I, and I think you're right on it, man. I mean, I think God gives us an opportunity and he gives us this free will to choose his way. And it's, so, but I'm going to let you continue, man. Okay. I don't want to okay. jump in there. So here's what I look at. There, there is rhyme and reason and there's statues and there's order that's been set up. Uh, there is... Um, Oh, I'm looking for the word, and it's escaping me. But, but there has been some guidelines that have been set up from the very, very, very beginning, AJ. And those guidelines and the structure that has been set up 
is to keep us on the right path. And, and mankind has the great tendency, because we are free will, we get to make our own choices. We're not puppets. God's not a puppeteer. He doesn't make us do anything. Right. Uh, but there are guidelines step, set up and put in place to keep us going down a certain path. Mm-hmm. And if we get off that path, and there's consequences attached to getting off the path, it's a choice that we make. That's right. So I, I, I look at it this way. It's not that God is sending anybody to hell. I do know it says in the book of Revelation at the great white throne judgment that all those that were in front of him, he opens up a book, and if your name's not written in the book of life, then he literally casts you into the lake of fire, which is a second death. It talks about uh, where the fire is never quenched. Uh, And so the Bible does say that. So in one aspect, you can say God does send people to hell, but you brought in the whole aspect of a loving God, Mm -hmm. okay? The Bible says God is love, right? But the also, Bible also says God is just. Mm, so, so you have a loving God, but he's also a just God. And then you get in the Old Testament, you hear languages like the wrath of God. Yeah. Or you hear that actually in Revelation during the tribulation when the seals are broken and the judgments come out. It talks about the wrath of God being poured out upon the earth. That's right. So you have all this in the mixture. I look at it this way. In your existence in your understanding, in your knowledge, and in your interaction with the Father, and hopefully you're actually in relationship with him, what part of God do you want to tap into? (laughs) Okay, you want to tap into the love of God, or you want to tap into the wrath of God? You want to tap into the mercy and grace of God, or you want to tap into the judgment of God? Because God has many aspects, and all of these personality traits make up his nature. Hmm. So here's where I like to go after it. Being, being uh, in the ministry for over 30 years and, and maneuvering through different denominations, all the denominations believe the same in certain areas, then they took a little bit of, stand, uh, a little bit of uh, slant in, in per, uh, interpretation in some other areas. I think of it like this. Mankind, because of what Adam did, because Adam strictly disobeyed, okay? So when Adam was created, he was created immortal. He was created with the perception that he could actually never die. But in the midst of that, he was also given a thorough understanding there's things you can do, and there's one, just one, one thing you can't do. And if you do the one thing, God was very clear, it's going to produce a consequence that's not going to be very beneficial for you. And, of course, we know the story, Adam disobeyed God. So because of that, Adam moved from immortality into mortality, which means that he would eventually die. But the death that Adam was going to die was not just a physical death. Even in that disobedience, it moved him in the realm of actually walking in spiritual death, which is separation from God, which is actually what we call hell, Hades, Sheo, or the lake of fire. So if you look at it that way, and I I honestly believe this, I don't really believe that hell was ever created for mankind. I believe it was created for Satan and his demons who disobeyed and rebelled against God long before this. So I believe a loving God never intended to send his creation, mankind, to hell But because mankind got out of alignment, they moved over into a judgment that was never meant for them. That's right. So let's talk about the loving God. So what, what, would a loving God allow that to play out? No. No. I look at this way, and you said, would a loving God ever send a man to hell? I look at this way, a loving God has done everything he can to prevent that. That's right. That's right. And I see it now, Pastor Jerry, me as a dad now, I see my son and uh, right now he's like three years old, but I can imagine when he's like 13, 14, 15 years old, and I'm telling him, hey, do this, and he doesn't. I mean, there's gonna come a time where I'm gonna spank him, and he's gonna, you know, or, or go, to, go to your room and, and go away. When he's older, there may be some consequences to, I mean, or bigger consequences for his actions, and I see that as, I mean, it's exactly what you're saying right now, now in, like in, the, in, 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 a, in a live person. I mean, God gave us this, and he's like, hey, go at it. Go at it this way. But it's your choice at the end if you want to go do that. And, and then we end up in, either in jail, 
dead or in hell. I mean, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where, that's where you get. As you maneuver and you mature in your relationship with the Lord, your perception, your understanding and knowledge also matures. Yep. And so I look at it, a loving God doesn't send anybody to hell. A loving God is doing everything he can That's right, man. to stop us from going there. That's right. There, there's a story I heard from evangelists many, many years ago, and he would always share this story uh, when, it was, when he was giving a message on, on salvation and eternal life. And uh, he had a real young son. He had like a three- or four-year-old son. And he says, think, think of it like this. I'm in the house with my son. And someone barges in my house and says, I'm going to give you a choice. I'm going to give you a choice. Either let me take your son and get a piece of plywood and put your son on the plywood and let me start nailing your son to this plywood. Wow. Either, either let me do that to the point where I nail him to this plywood, your three-year-old son, while your son's crying and begging and asking you to save him, you let that go on. Or let me do something else to you, even more important, let me take your wife. If you love your wife so much, I want your son. And it gets very graphic in the detail, and it was very powerful back then uh, in the messages, and I've seen a lot of people respond to how he played that out. But that's why I, that's why I look at it. When God looked at you, AJ, when God looked at me, when God looked at our family members, the people we love, when God looked at all our membership of Open Door Church and the people that we're going yeah. to meet in the following years as we do ministry, God looked at them and he looked at his son and his love for us was so great. His son was like that three-year-old boy that was put to plywood. He said, I choose you, AJ. Wow, and because I love you so much and I don't want you to go to hell, I'm literally going to have my son take your payment for you. That was awesome. Yeah. That was really good, Jerry. Guys, so you heard it, man. I mean, if God loves us unconditionally, but he gives us the option. He's giving us, hey, he, he lines it all up for you, but just choose the right path, and you're not going to end up in H-E double hockey sticks. No. Right? Let me say this right now. <laughs> if you're watching this, and honestly, you've heard a lot, and, and through your through your lifetime, you, you, you've heard a lot about God and about his grace and love and mercy. But honestly, maybe right now, the Holy Spirit right now is speaking to you, saying you've never, never stepped into this truth. You understand it, but you've never applied it. And it could, it could be many different ways, but right now, maybe where you're sitting, you're right there, you're not in relationship with Jesus Christ. In fact, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about a scripture out of Matthew chapter 7, and uh, the gentleman was speaking, said... Many will come in the end times and say, Lord, Lord, we did this for you. We did this for you. We did this in your name. We sacrificed this. We cast out demons. We prophesied. And Jesus turns to them and says, depart from me, for I never knew you. You say, well, I don't understand what that means. That word know in the English actually comes from two different Greek words. One of the words it comes from is a head knowledge, like, you walk by somebody, oh, that's, that's Brian. Hey, Brian, how you doing? There's that. The other form of the Greek word is a deeper relationship. It's like intimacy. And I would just ask you this. Does the Father really know you? He knows of you because you've been created, but is he in relationship with you, and are you in relationship with him? That's what salvation is. You come to the place realizing that you cannot pay for your sins. If you do, it's a place called hell. He loved you so much that he sent his son to take the death bite away from you. Come on. So if you've never really gone to that place and then asked Jesus to become your Lord and Savior, I challenge you to do it right now. In fact, I'm going to lead you in a word of prayer, just a simple prayer. Say, dear Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've messed up. I've made tons and tons of mistakes. And Father, I believe that you truly love me. I believe that you sent your son to die for me so I would not have to die. You sent your son literally to die on the cross so I would not be separated in an eternal place called hell. So Jesus, I believe that. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life. I receive you. I receive your sin payment on the cross. Jesus, thank you. I tell you what, if you prayed that prayer, if you prayed that prayer, I'm going to ask you right now to call our call center 
877-413-0888. Let us know because we have a salvation packet, a discipleship packet, a Bible to give to you. And we'd like to rejoice in the decision you made. We're going to tell you what, 11 God has gone as far as he could go. He's paid the ultimate sacrifice so you would not spend eternity separated from him forever and ever. He loves you. Man, Jerry, that was good, man. Boom. So whoever sent in that question, thank you, because that, that was a really good question. And, guys, if you have any comments, if you have anything, please, uh, wherever you're watching it right now, drop a comment. If you have a question for Pastor Jerry, say, Pastor Jerry, what, what about this and this? Let us know what, and we'll respond. Right, Jerry? Right on, man. Yeah, man. So it looks like we have a little, it looks like the, the, the production guys did, did something here as a theme, because the next question, it says, do you need to get baptized to get to heaven? Okay. I remember where it's at. It's in the book of Mark, and I think it's around Mark 16. It says, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. Okay, so many people, according to that scripture, has taken it that you have to ask forgiveness, ask Jesus in, and then you have to follow it up with water baptism for you to have your sins forgiven and for you to actually walk in salvation. All right, I had a grandmother that came from a denomination that really believed that if you're not baptized, you can't go to heaven. Okay, and. Uh, we would have some good theological discussion. <laughs> you like how I said yeah, that? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. We had some good theological discussions. All right. There is a scripture in the book of Peter where it talks about baptism. And it says this, not for the remissions of sins, but towards a good conscience. In other words, baptism is very important. Baptism is a spiritual marker in your life. You need to be baptized if you've never been baptized and you've been born again because the Bible says you need to be baptized. Jesus Christ himself, okay, Jesus Christ himself was baptism, but did he need to get baptized to go to heaven? Because he came from heaven, <laughs> all right? So it's a good thing. It's a mature thing. It helps you walk in, I think, greater spiritual truth. I believe that, but I don't believe you need to be baptized to go to heaven. Here's, here's one thing. You go to Peter, and it says it's not for the remission of sins. Remissions of sins get you into heaven. Once your sins are forgiven, you have a free access, uh, free access pass there, okay? But I'm going to give you even a more practical point. When Jesus was on the cross, and he had the two male factors, one to his right and one to his left. That's right, man. And one on the left looked to him, and he said, uh, he actually spoke to the other one. He said, leave this man alone. He's a, he's a holy man. He's a just man. He doesn't deserve the death he's going through. And he looked over to Jesus and says, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, today you will be with me in paradise. Yeah. Okay? Now, did they pull that brother off and stick him in some water <laughs> and put him back on the cross? No. No. So if the brother on the left can get to heaven without getting dunked, getting baptized, or even sprinkled, yeah. uh, I don't think we should too. And I think the Bible is very clear on it. Baptism is a process of your maturing your faith. It's, a, it's an act of submission. It's also, uh, th this is another thing about baptism is, I don't have my ring because my ring broke off, but I am married, okay? Everybody knows I'm married. I'm married to a beautiful blonde named Terry, and uh, she's a dental assistant. She's amazing. Anybody that puts up with me is amazing, by the way. <laughs> that, facts. Right. So, facts. So if I did have my wedding ring on, and I don't because it broke, uh, when you saw the ring, you automatically knew something about me. Yeah. I'm taken. I'm off the market. I'm off limits. I'm committed to someone else. All right? I'm, I'm, I'm actually committed to someone else. I, I'm in relationship with someone. I belong to someone else. Bab it's, it's a symbol, and it's a symbol that gives a narrative, right? Same way baptism is. If, if you get baptized and you've been to one of our baptisms, a lot of times you will hear the pastors and elders that are baptizing buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of the resurrection. Baptism is a picture of the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So when we get baptized, we're actually portraying the death, the burial, and resurrection of Christ. It also tells everybody that we are identified with Jesus Christ. It says that we belong to him. So baptism is a spiritual wedding ring almost. So there you go. Man, and it's so important for people to know that because it's funny that this question is on there. Uh, I was in Houston recently, and I met with a couple of friends over there. 
and he was telling me that they had a Bible study with, with a group of friends. And it looked like it was from somebody like from your grandma's uh, because they kept pushing it. Like, dude, you got to give your life to God. But if you're not baptized, you're not going to heaven. And he's like, what? Like, what are you talking about? And he was asking me about it. And I said, like, man, like, and I told him the exact same story about the man next to Jesus on the cross. And I said, dude, imagine if somebody's in their deathbed and you go and pray for him and you tell him, like, hey, would you like you to? You got to run the ass yeah. off quick. <laughs> yeah. Yo, so, guys, it is important. It is, it is a, 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 a sense of, like, a, a symbolic for you, a, like, like Pastor Jerry said. But do you need it to go to heaven? It's not a must, man. What about all the Old Testament saints? Yeah. I don't say it, Jay. Did they get baptized? <laughs> Just yeah. saying. Now, Naaman did, but Naaman got baptized for his healing. That's right. Get man. in the river and go down seven times. That's right, man. Right on. So, guys, it's, it's just important. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That is the only way to heaven. We know that. I mean, again, is it important if you have the option to get baptized? Yeah. Yeah, you need to. Honestly, if you've never been baptized, I really encourage you because I've also, uh, and Troy talks about this, and, and when Troy speaks on baptism, I love that. He talks about baptism is a prophetic act. Yeah, right on. So, guys, again, we invite you to get baptized. Leave it in the water, man. If you don't, and if you live a righteous life and you have Jesus in your heart, I mean, you know what's going to happen. So, thank you, Jerry. That was really good, man. So, we have a couple of minutes left, Jay. We have about five minutes left, and, and again, I'm telling you, these guys in the production team, I know y'all, man. I know you set this up, Cause, and I know why they did it, because Pastor, Pastor Troy, and I think you are too, next month's sermon series is called Heaven and Hell. Heaven and Hell. Yeah. So I'm like, nice, nice trick, you guys. Nice little trick. All right, here comes the last question. You have a couple of minutes, Pastor Jerry. Can I go to heaven if I have been divorced? <laughs> Come on, man. Can you go to heaven if you've been divorced? My, well, my first rebuttal to that is, what sin disqualifies you from going to heaven? <laughs> yeah. What sin, honestly? Let's, let's talk about the sins that does not allow you to go to heaven. Honestly, Jesus said there's only one sin that disqualifies you from going to heaven, which is a sin of blasphemy or rejection of the Holy Spirit. See, when the Holy Spirit brings you to the place of making a decision and to receiving Jesus in your life, and you say no, you're saying, I reject you. That's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Never once it says, uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and divorce kicks you out. <laughs> oh, by the way, if, you're, if, if you don't know, it says in the Old Testament that God himself wrote a bill of divorcement against his own people, Israel. I divorce you. But yet, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to bring them back in relationship and covenant. So even God has divorced somebody. He divorced Israel. So, no, divorce does not kick you out of the gates. <laughs> it I, may make the ride up there a little bit bumpy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, and, and I don't, I mean, I, I, if I can say this, I've, I'm divorced. I was, I mean, I, how do you say it? I, my my Spanish I have experienced the important certainty of divorce. <laughs> there you go. And I mean... A lot of us have. I have. Yeah. And, and, and for a lot of us, I'm going to say this. We still need to say biblical on it. God's not for divorce. He's against it. Yeah. He's about reconciliation. But there's sometimes, you have to understand, there's two people involved, and both of them have a free will. And sometimes one person chooses not to surrender to the restoring love of the Holy Spirit and the Father, yeah. and they want to go their own way. Hopefully, in time, they get that taken care of. And a lot of you have gone through divorce. I have myself. It was not something that I wished or walked in. Yeah. I had no choice. And it also wasn't because of a, I mean, all of us make mistakes, but there was not immorality involved. It's just one of those unfortunate things that happened. So do I get kicked out of the family because I didn't do anything wrong? <laughs> I mean, do I, do I lose For my sure, inheritance? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what if I did something wrong? What if I did? What if, what if I made some really bad immoral decisions? What if I got caught up in, a, in an illicit relationship I never should have been in? There's still the blood of Jesus that can forgive me from that if I'm willing to repent. That's right. But when your children are disobedient, do you kick them out of the wheel because they are stupid sometimes? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. And it goes back almost to our previous question, can I go into heaven if I'm not baptized? I mean, 
there's going to be moments, you know what I'm saying? So, no, I, I think it is a scary situation. It's like, and it, again, because religion tells you that. Yeah. Religion tells you that, and it puts that fear and doubt in your mind. But Real, man, Religion is all about rules and regulations. That's right. It's not about relationship, because religion don't want you to get in relationship because you get upgraded quickly. Come on, man. And it goes back to what Pastor Choi said this week, and again, it's all about kingdom. Yeah. It's not religion. Kingdom yeah. mentality is like, man, it's okay, you fell. Wait, let's just say, not even fell, I mean, because if, if I say fell, it means that you probably made a mistake. But if you went through divorce or whatever, dude, God can pick you up. God restores it. Again, I, I went through divorce as well. I am married again, and my beautiful wife, is, it's actually her birthday today. And Happy birthday, Myra. <laughs> yeah, man, and, and man, I have two beautiful kids with my beautiful wife, and I can't, I can't tell you how God just redeemed that timeline, and it's just incredible. So do I believe it, that I would have gone to hell if, or, or do I believe that I would go to hell still being divorced? No, man, no. I believe that God came down to earth and, and sent his son and saved me through his precious blood. Let me say this real quick, and we got like two minutes left, and we need, we need to cut this out. So I want to do a little ministry as we close this up. When it comes to divorce, the actual statistics today, even within the church, a Bible-believing church, that 50 to 55% of all marriages end in divorce, all right? So let me say this. If you are, if you've experienced divorce or you're a child and the byproduct uh, of a divorce, let me say this. Here's what you need to do. He mentioned the key word, kingdom. Let the king, Jesus Christ, have dominion over your life and over your circumstances and let him rule and reign and let him be the Isaiah 61 anointing where it says the spirit of the Lord is upon me is gifted me to preach good tidings to bind up the brokenhearted, right? It says also to set the captive free and to release the prisoner. Many people emotionally, relationally, mentally, even and spiritually, are in bondage because of guilt of a divorce. Whether you caused it or you was the byproduct of it. Let the king have dominion in your life. Let him bind up the broken pieces and let him set you free and cast aside all the guilt and all the shame. If you caused it because of bad, selfish decisions, the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you from all that. Receive his forgiveness. Forgive yourself and forgive those that hurt you in the process. I had to. I had to forgive a lot of people. Right. My children that had to go through it and still suffer a little bit from it because their mom and dad are not together no more. Right. They have to forgive. And I encourage you, accept God's forgiveness and forgive the ones that you're still holding grudges against because they hurt you because of their decisions. They're humans, just yeah. like you are. We don't always get it right, but yeah. we have a God that takes the wrong and makes it right. That's right, man. So with that said, is it a free pass to go and do whatever you want? No, <laughs> that's not what it means. But God, God can uh, transform and make everything correct. Pastor Jerry, this was an awesome, awesome segment, man. I, I love doing stuff like this, man. I really do. I love taking the practicalities of everyday life and incorporating the word of God and the mercy yeah. of grace of God in it and letting you know that you can still be an overcomer. Yeah. If your feet's muddy because you fell in a ditch, you get to get out of the ditch because the Bible says a just man falls seven times and gets back up. Come on. Why? Jesus Christ. That's right, man. So, guys, this was Asking for a Friend. And this is Pastor Jerry. I'm Pastor AJ. Thank you guys for joining us on this Wednesday sermon series. And, man, if you, again, if you have any questions, drop a comment below and tell us, what it is that you want us to answer. Or go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, no, no, no. And if you need prayer, don't forget our call center is sitting there waiting to pray with you. 877-413-0888. Remember, you're the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. And highly favored of the Lord. God bless you guys. Love Bye -bye. you guys. Peace out.